Have you ever wondered how energy is transferred between each energy store in a situation such as when I bounce on a pogo stick? Hi, I'm Mr. Yap, Master Teacher for Physics. In this video, we are going to use LOL diagrams to do an energy analysis of an event involving a basketball. In particular, we will look at the issue of defining initial and final states. Whenever we describe an event, there is always a choice of initial and final states. Our choice of initial and final states affect the story we tell in terms of which energy transfers took place and which stores are empty or filled before and after the event took place. We will do this by looking at a ball falling towards the ground. We have two things. Let us consider the ball together with the ground as our objects of interest. Let's put them down in our LOL diagram. This helps to remind ourselves that we are only interested in the energy transfers into the object of interest, the energy transfers out of the object, the energy in various stores of the object at the initial state of the event and the energy in various stores of the object at the final state of the event. Let's play it back in slow motion. You can see the ball falls towards the ground, bounces up and continues to bounce a few more times. As expected, it eventually comes to a stop. First, let us begin by defining the initial and final states of the event. Our initial state is when the ball is stationary at the top, just when it is released. And our final state is just before it hits the ground. To help us in the energy analysis, we can place these chips on the LOL diagram. This will indicate the changes in the amount of energy of our objects of interest at the initial and final states of the event. In the initial state, you can see these chips stack up in the column for energy in the gravitational potential store. There is no fixed rule for deciding how many chips to use because it depends on how many things like which position we are using as a reference level where the energy in the gravitational store is zero. For this example, we will use ground level as the reference level and assign nine chips to represent the amount of energy in the gravitational potential store due to the height of the ball above the ground. Notice that there are no chips in this column for energy in the kinetic store. That's because the ball was initially at rest. In the final state, there was no energy in the gravitational potential store because the ball is at the ground level but there was energy in the kinetic store because the ball is now moving much faster. Now the question we should ask ourselves is, should we move all the chips from the gravitational potential store to the kinetic store? Well, if you want to be 100% accurate, you have to say no. On the way down, the ball had to push air out of the way. The ball will become slightly warmer because there is work done against friction with the air. The amount of energy of the ball at the initial state is more than the amount of energy at the final state. This is because some energy was transferred to the surroundings due to the work done against friction with the air. We represent this in our LOL diagram by using one chip to represent some energy that was being transferred out of our object of interest due to the work done by an external force. You will also notice that in the final state, energy in the internal store had increased because the ball becomes slightly warmer due to friction with the air. Although there was a difference in the amount of energy at initial and final states, no energy was created or destroyed during this event. There were 9 units of energy in our object of interest at the start. By the end of the event, one unit of energy was transferred to the surroundings and 8 units remain in our objects of interest. Normally, the amount of energy transferred to the surroundings due to friction with the air is very small. Quite often, 
we state our assumption that air resistance is negligible. So we will ignore any transfer of energy to the surroundings. So we will simply have nine units of energy at the start with all in the gravitational potential store and nine units of energy at the end with all in the kinetic store. Now, if we define a different final state, our whole analysis will be different. Let us retain our original initial state when the ball is stationary at the top. We will assume that air resistance is negligible as the ball falls through the air. But let's define a new final state, which is just after the ball hits the ground. The ball is at the ground level and is bouncing upwards. After the ball hits the ground, both the ball and the ground become slightly warmer. The energy in the internal store of the ground and the ball increases due to the forces exerted by the ball and the ground on each other. As work is done by these forces, energy is transferred from the kinetic store of the falling ball to the internal store of the ball and the ground. In our LOL diagram, we can use the chips to show that at the initial state, there was some energy in the gravitational potential store, but no energy in the kinetic store. At the final state, there was no energy in the gravitational potential store because the ball is at the ground level. But there was an increase in energy in the internal store because the ball and ground both became slightly warmer during the impact. There was also some energy in the kinetic store because the ball had a high speed immediately after it hit the ground. Remember that we considered the ball together with the ground as our objects of interest and we assume negligible air resistance? Therefore, during the event, no energy was transferred to the surroundings. Energy was only transferred between stores within our objects of interest, that is the ball and the ground. No energy was created or destroyed in this event. There was initially 9 units of energy at the start, with all in the gravitational potential store. At the final state, we still had 9 units of energy, 4 units in the internal store, and 5 units in the kinetic store. Let's go over the main points in this video. Energy is not created or destroyed in any process. When we do an energy analysis of any event, it is important to clearly define the objects of interest. When we analyze an event, we have a choice of different initial and final states. It is important to define the initial and final states clearly. It's time for you to explore more examples on your own.